Hello, Patrick Walchuk, and I'm sitting here with Ken Hoyt, who practices real estate law here in Ottawa. And today we're going to be talking about the purchase of multi-unit residential uh, properties. Uh, so Ken, what is the most important thing or some of the most important things that you would like to see uh, that are provided for in the agreement of purchase and sale? Uh, I would say my number one concern when dealing with multifamily, Pat, is that the agreement have a closing date which gives me enough time to do or make the inquiries that need to be made. When buying multifamily, we want to ensure that, you know, if you're buying a four unit apartment building, it is a four unit apartment building and it's not something less than that. And in order to get that kind of confirmation, we make inquiries with the City of Ottawa. A zoning compliance report is what's requested. The city has a timeline for providing that answer. If the closing date is too close, I may not have enough time to get the answer. Fire code compliance, another issue, uh, another inquiry that gets made by me. Time is needed for that as well. So giving the lawyer, the buyer's lawyer, enough time to do the job he needs to do is critical. Okay, you, you mentioned a compliance report that you ordered from the city. What, what the heck is that? Well, the zoning compliance report would tell me whether the City of Ottawa recognizes the four-unit apartment building as a four-unit apartment building, or does its record say it's just a triplex? If it's just a triplex, then you're not getting what you're supposed to be getting. We've got a problem. And we can remedy that problem usually, but we need to know what the actual legal use of the building is. We want to know if there are any work orders against the property, whether there are any property standard violations. All of this information is provided in the zoning compliance report. Okay, let's follow up with that just a little bit. If um, somebody buys a four unit building and as you say, it turns out to be just a three unit building and you can remedy that, what remedies are available to, to that purchaser? Okay, so assuming we actually know this within the appropriate time period as specified in the agreement of purchase and sale. It's right. all in the fine print, but the lawyer knows what, what to look for. Mm -hmm. So as long as we bring that issue that we've only got a three unit as opposed to a four unit, and if we bring that to the seller's attention within the appropriate time periods, that now becomes the seller's responsibility to correct. So at that point in time, the seller has a choice. Okay, I will, as the seller, apply for a building permit to convert that fourth unit, which hasn't been converted, into a legitimate unit. So that would be the remedy. And the seller might agree to do that. Or the seller might choose to and say, no, I'm not doing that at all. Forget it, Mr. Buyer. In which case the buyer would have the right to terminate the transaction and get out of the deal. Oh, very interesting. Okay, so uh, there are a number of uh, very viable options and, and somebody is not locked into that. No, no. Okay. The buyer has a way out of the transaction and typically what happens if the seller doesn't want to take on the project of legitimizing or legalizing a unit, right. then they might be prepared to reduce the purchase price and the buyer takes on the issue of legalizing the unit. Terrific, okay. Well, uh, Ken, it's been my experience that dealing uh, with, with lawyers as well as realtors, that not all are created equal, not everybody's comfortable in dealing with uh, the multi-unit residential property versus a standard freeholder condo. So that's great to know that, that you do have that uh, knowledge and experience. So if somebody needs to contact you about that, uh, how do they do that? How do they get a hold of you? Well, my office number, 613-231-2995, extension 22 or my website, which is ken at kenhoytlaw.ca. Terrific, okay, and thank you very much.